Hi, I'm Jan Doyle. Welcome to Wise Talk. Today is going to be a great show. I'm really happy to have a repeat guest. Her name is Kathy Nutley, and she is a terrific artist with, and working with quilts. Kathy, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me back, Jan. I'm so happy you're here. I hope you come back another time. Kathy, today's program is going to be about adding color to quilts. What inspired you or motivated you to make changes in your work to be specific in adding other colors to your quilts? Well, I think that I'm like many other quilters who envision their quilt at the very beginning of the quilting process, and I was finding it increasingly difficult to find the colors or the shades of color that I wanted in my quilts. Mm -hmm. and. So finally I decided that maybe I could use different methods and create what I had seen in my mind and kind of make my vision come true. That's terrific. Now the first one we're going to talk about is behind me. It's called Petals. Can you tell me a little bit about this quilt? I sure can. Um, I think what I like most about this quilt is the contrast. The background fabric is the exact shade of purple that I envisioned. However, as I had mentioned, I had to go all the way to the old country store in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. And you're from Connecticut. I am. Yes, now that's a drive. <laughs> yes. To find that exact color. But to me, that's what sets off the rest of the colors. It is, it's, and I happen to love purple, but it is beautiful. How did you add color, other color, to this quilt? What were some of the techniques? Well, the flowers are fused on, and I used raw edge applique mm -hmm. to adhere them even more, and then it was through the use of threads. Oh, like any thread? Well, I tried to use threads that that were a little monochromatic with the flowers themselves that help blend the lights and the darks. Mm -hmm. I also, I love to use bling. So you're gonna see metallic threads even in the leaves here, in the free motion quilting in the leaves. Well, that's one thing I noticed when we did the pre-interview. It's not overdone with bling, but it, it's touches of bling. It adds a sparkle. It adds a sparkle. And yeah. point to the daffodil again. I yeah. love what you did with the daffodil, and the, and the quilting is exquisite, absolutely exquisite. I tried to follow the lines of the petals. Wonderful, wonderful. And is there anything else we missed in this particular quilt that you'd like to show us, make sure we have? Well, I think what was interesting was I tried to use a little bit of polka dot fabric too. Ah. Oh. Something just a little bit different and I think it adds a little, again, just a little bit of eye bling without drawing too much attention to itself. And I would say that's subtle. All of it is subtle. When my eyes travel around the quilt, I'm noticing various aspects. And what makes a true artist is not just a quick look and move on to the next one, but you could look at this quilt and, and see things in this quilt constantly as you're looking around. It's just beautiful. Did this win a prize by any chance or award? An um, award? It actually won third place. Third place? Third place. <laughs> at a quilt show. Okay, well that's just beautiful. I'd like to move on to some of the other ones, um, but before we get into this, one thing I noticed about this quilt was that you, uh, your quilting is exquisite. How do you find quilting patterns? When we talked previously, you mentioned your journal. What is mm -hmm. this all about? Well, I, again, like many quilters, I think we, we put the top together and then we are scared to death to put a needle and thread in it. You are. We are. I was. <laughs> I are. spent an entire summer um, just going through the internet, looking through books, even seeing other people's quilts, especially on Pinterest. That's a big favorite of mine. And what I did was I, I looked for different patterns that I liked for free motion quilting. I bought myself this sketchbook, which I call a journal, and I spent an entire summer on my deck drawing these patterns out. 
Now this is interesting. I'm just going to take it because there's a glare at, in that camera, oh, okay. and there might be a little bit of a glare. I think we it's all get, done in pencil. It's all done. Okay. I, now we're starting to get a little bit of it, but and this is a, a petal or a flower, mm -hmm. and then there's page after page after page of different sketches. And I'm also seeing, you made a note, can be used in a square, so you make notes to yourself. I do. And, and that's wonderful. It's like talking to yourself in writing. And then there's all different types of um, designs in here. So do you make up the designs, or, do, or is it something that you copy from other quilts, or how um, does that work? Again, I spend a lot of time on Pinterest, and I only, will copy the ones that I really feel that attract my interest. Mm -hmm. um, many times taking even just the circular pebble and adding it to other designs or adding other designs to it, you have such a range of possibilities. Yes, you do. And I always like to do it in pencil, even though it's, you know, the contrast is not as great as it would be with pen, because to me the drag of the pencil is almost like the drag of the needle and thread. Oh, that's very interesting. It just gives me that feel. Now, I notice there are only once in the book. Do you practice it on paper before you actually put the needle to the quilt? Um, actually, I do. In fact, many times I'll do it in the air with the, the gross motor movement, and then I'll, I'll try it just even on a table, then I'll try it on paper, and then I'll go for it. Right, because there's, there's such a thing as muscle, uh, muscle, muscle memory. memory. Correct. And I think this might, we both were teachers, and I think it might come a little bit from that, but you, that does help you when you, you actually go to the machine. Well, it does, because many times people get stuck when they're trying to free motion quilt a pattern because they don't know where to go next. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. that's where you sometimes make a blooper. Yes, yes. Now, what's nice about this journal is that anytime I'm working on a quilt and say I have a border, I can flip through here and absolutely find something that I'm happy with. Whereas before, I would get to this point before I quilted it and not know what to do. Oh, and I spent so much more time searching for the right pattern when I'm pretty sure I've got it. Yes, yes, yes. That's very interesting. Now, you were mentioning this particular quilt. This is called Autumn Hues. Uh, no, this one here is Indian Summer. Indian Summer, excuse me. Where's Autumn? This one's this Autumn. This is Autumn All right, Hughes. let's go to Autumn okay. Hughes. Okay, tell me about this particular quilt. Well, what I enjoyed about making this one is that I actually hand-painted all of these fabrics in my backyard. Oh, my goodness. You hand-painted them. I did. Um, the background fabrics are not, but everything in the foreground was hand-painted. Tell me a little bit about the procedure for hand-painting this. Well, um, I actually have two sawhorses. I have a Did piece. you steal them from your husband? I, I come to think of them as borrowing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, they go right back where they went. Oh, been. Okay. I have a piece of foam board. I cover it with thick plastic. Mm -hmm. um, I have clamps to hold it down. I pin down my fabric, and it's actually called test fabric. It's pre prepared for dyeing fabric. Yes. They call it PDF. PDF fabric. Um, yes. I have PBO set of color paints, which I love to mix and create new colors. Are these the paints here? Or are not? They're no. for something else. No, okay. these are different. Um, and what I do is I mix the colors. It often takes more time to mix the colors till you're happy than to actually paint it. Oh, that's interesting. But it's a lot of fun. I dry them in the sun because the sun heightens the color. Yes, yes, yes. Now, one thing I really noticed about this are your ears of corn. How, I mean, it looks like an ear of corn. How did you do that? Well, part of it is the shading. You don't realize it so much when it's been machine quilted, but there's shading in here. And then what, I got myself an ear of corn and I looked at the kernels and I copied it. Wow, and how did you do the shading of the corn, of the fabric? That was done when I was painting it. Really, and mm -hmm. so you really pre-visualize what your end result is gonna be. I do, and I know when I'm happy with it and when I'm not. That's phenomenal. And it, then is the uh, crow, is this a crow? or a That bird? is a crow. Is that hand-painted? Yes, it is. Wow. Yep, and, everything and that's not the background. And then again, here's the free motion quilting, which I found in my journal. Now, this is very interesting, and it looks like ears of corn. In, is that what it was intended to be? What, these here? Right, yes. No, those are just leaves.
Okay, they look like little ears of corn to me, but that's okay. Well, thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> so that's just beautiful. But I also want to mention your border quilting is, now you have a little metallic here. I do. And so there's you that add, bling. There's that bling. <laughs> and it's so perfectly even and straight. And did you work hard to get it that way, or does it come naturally to you? Well, I think that you have little techniques that you pick up over time. Actually, what I did was I used my ruler and I have a chalk pencil that I use. I'm very careful about marking quilts. And I just gave myself reference lines to make sure that I stayed straight. And um, I put on a good book on tape and away I went. I have to tell you a secret that I'd never let anybody else know. And it's just between you and me. The first quilt of mine that I made, that I marked, I hadn't had any lessons, I hadn't had anything, and I read you're supposed to mark your quilt. Do you think you can guess what I used? Not to pen. Yes. Oh. <laughs> you're taking my breath away. Yes. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Oh. And I'm thinking, you know, this just doesn't feel right to use pen, but that's exactly what I used. Well, now you've made that mistake and you'll never do it that, again. <laughs> yes. And I've never admitted that to anybody either. Just saying. So I want to just move on to our our next quilt. This is called A Summer Solitude. No uh, or yes? Am well, I the wrong? this is Indian Summer. Indian Summer. Where am I? I must be wrong in my notes somewhere. Okay, tell me about Indian Summer. This is just beautiful. Well, this here was a panel that I had picked up with a friend of mine. We challenged each other to make something with this panel because the colors were outside of both of our comfort zones. What is your comfort zone color? Uh, I would say a little more, more of a subtle, like the autumn hues here. Mm -hmm. um, I, I like a lot of lights and shadows and depth to my quilts. This was very bright very for bright. me. It is, yes, it is but bright. But when I took it home, surprisingly, I had other fabric in my stash that went with it. Now, what is a stash? A stash are um, fabrics that you hide from your husband. <laughs> I should tell the audience that the husband is here working the camera, so he's not listening to this either. Oh, no. No. Okay, so these are fabrics you hide from your husband. Well, a stash really are fabrics that you find along the way, and uh, you just can't leave without them. You can't leave without them. And it's just, you just can't leave and without them. And you know them. you're going to use that fabric. Yes. Now, it might be in 10, 15 years, Correct. but it's nice having them. You have to have them. It's like and ESP. You know you're going to use it. Yes, that's exactly right. So it's amazing that this fits perfectly with with what you're... With the colors. Yes. It's, yeah. Now, how about the border fabric? Did you um, have that or did you go shopping for that? I actually went shopping for that and this brown. And I have to say that my husband helped me pick that out and he was right on. Oh, so he goes with you to the quilt shop. He does. Um, we'll go away for long weekends and he's very willing to stop at a quilt shop for me. Oh, no, that to me makes him a keeper. You know, that makes him a keeper. That's wonderful. One of many reasons. What, okay, but for me, that would be <laughs> primary. Well, this, so this is very, this is really beautiful. You did a wonderful job with um, the quilting again, and I like the technique that you used on this particular, on this, on this particular piece. Now, I'd like to move along to okay. the reverse applique that oh. you have in front of you. Why you don't you hold this up? slide that over to me? And this is a result oh, of a good. class that I took with Rob Appel, mm -hmm. who came to our guild for a workshop. Um, the only difference was he used one piece of fabric behind the black. Mm -hmm. And I decided that I wanted to try and use multiple fabrics. Well, let me explain that a little bit to the audience. So instead of having different colors here, it would be like all blue, all green. Right. Okay. Um, what you do, what, what it's very simply, is you cut out the black fabric and you put a, a, a very brightly colored one on the back of it, which makes the areas you've cut out really pop. Mm -hmm. But I decided that I wanted to try and do it with different colors and I drew this myself and gave it a try. Wow. And I must say that basting glue was my best friend. <laughs> <laughs> now, what kind of scissors do you use to cut? Because this is a very delicate cut. 
Well, I actually have Karen K. Buckley scissors, mm -hmm. and I have her smallest pair, and they are wonderful. Yeah, you would need something. Yeah. You know, not your kitchen shears. No. You know, that you cut chicken <laughs> You needed with. something that you could really, you can see here with the buds. You have yes. to cut it very small. And right here, and I'm even, mm -hmm. even the lines in between. And so then you, um, so you uh, used glue and you, set the fabric to the black, right. and then you quilted it. And I'm noticing, again, you have a little bit of bling with the Oh, uh, I've got to. There's some in everything. Yes. But And then also using your thread to add color. Interesting. Very, very yeah. interesting. And I like what you did over here with the center of the flower. With the pebbling. Yes. Yeah. Excellent job. So you have, oh, and look what you did up here with the dragonfly. A little more bling. A little more bling. <laughs> very, very nice. Really Thank wonderful you. job. Now, sitting on the table in front of you, you have a piece of very pretty blue fabric. Tell me about that. Well, this was this started out as a piece of pure white test fabric. PDF. PDF. Um, I was playing around with sponge painting and attempting to make a midnight sky. Mm -hmm. um, as always, I start out with my paint chips. Mm -hmm. I find colors that I want to emulate in my painting, which okay. I did. Now put your paint chips over here a little bit closer to me so they, yeah, okay. So you have paint chips, you take them from Home Depot. Home Depot Home and Lowe's, Lowe's. they're gonna okay. love this. All right, and then they are, because we're advertising them. So here you have your paint chips, and then what do you do with these? Well, I when I'm mixing my um, colors of paint, I have a scrap piece of fabric that I try the colors out on. And one of my favorite things is this one with the square in it because I can lay it down on the fabric and see if it matches correctly, if oh, I'm happy with okay. it. Okay, interesting. But this, um, it's kind of a serendipitous uh, technique. Um, I've decided to do hydrangea blossoms with this. I think oh, it, it screams hydrangea. It does, more it so really, than a midnight sky. No, it doesn't. It's, I love, first of all, I love hydrangeas, and I love blue hydrangeas. But this just screams, and I know the audience is thinking that, but there's also a little shimmer in here. How did you add shimmer? It's the, actually a, a shimmer paint that I add to the color. It's white. Oh, and you used a sponge and dabbed it on? I did, I did. It, it almost looks like a stormy sky, but I'm gonna go with the petals. But that's some of the fun of painting. Sometimes you come out with something very serendipitous. Yes, yes. It is real, and then maybe if you have enough, this is, if you look at another piece of it, this over here does look a little stormy. Mm -hmm. So maybe you could look, use that in a different piece. You don't have to use- You can always add to it, even when oh, that's it's dry. Right. Oh, that, oh, that's right. I didn't know that. Or just paint another, paint another one. Okay, so then I'm just going to hand this back to you. Right. Now, in front of me, I loved this piece. Tell me a little bit about this piece. Uh, that was for a challenge at, um, well, our quilt guild, the Connecticut Peacemakers Quilt Guild. It's a wonderful and guild. I've learned so much there. Yes, it's a wonderful guild. Um, the challenge was to do something with nature. Mm -hmm. And I had actually painted that background fabric to be a birch tree. But I decided that it went very well with what I was trying to accomplish. And I actually used Shiva paint sticks to paint the feathers and the flowers. Now Shiva paint sticks, I, I have these over here. Can you mm -hmm. tell me a little bit about them, please? I sure can. Um, these are oil paints in a, um, a thickened form and I really don't use them as they're meant to be used. I actually use a paintbrush and oh. uh, a very small paintbrush especially for this to paint it and then I heat set it with an iron. When you, you don't put the iron right on top of the, on the paint. No, what I do is I use a paper towel and I put it on top and you know that you're done and you have heat set it when no more of the paint shows on your paper towel. Now when I look at these um, paint sticks, they remind me of, of teacher's chalk actually. They do. And, and, I, and um, I love, I happen to love this particular color, but other people could use it directly on the fabric. And, and I have done that. 
you can, if you have a larger space that you're trying to color, these were very small, you can color on there. But then I would use um, a stencil brush and smooth it. Mm. And also it helps, when I first start to paint something, I cover it in the white Shiva paint stick and I will iron it so that it kind of it comes a little softer and then when you add colors on top it blends beautifully. Now um, so my suggestion and I'm sure you did this instead of taking a prized piece and starting off one should practice with this on on some fabric. And well just... and that's what my daisy piece was I was now, practicing. Is this one? That's the Gerber daisies. All right, now tell me a little bit about Gerber daisies. The, first of all, it's hard to believe you were practicing. Well, I was I, trying. This is just gorgeous. I was attempting to see if, what I could do with blending. And I wanted to add tips here, a little bit of different color here. And I have to tell you that when I finished painting it, I was not all that enamored with it until I added the free motion quilting. And depending on the thread that you choose, it blended it all together. Oh, now that's an interesting comment. Did you hand draw, hand free, hand draw those? Yes, I did. So I'm just going to grab that back from you. Mm -hmm. So you didn't, you know, it's interesting. I kind of felt that way about something I had done that I didn't like it, I didn't like it, I didn't like it until I was finished. And right. all the, the, some of the parts came together. What I also, so you, you, you colored down here, but again, it's your quilt, and your quilting is exquisite again, and you added detail with your quilting, but you also did something else with beading. I did. Um, when I was finished, it just didn't have any bling. <laughs> I had to add some to it. It didn't seem right to add um, metallic thread, so I had some beads, and I thought, all right, we'll give it a little bit of pop. So the expression that I have is um, my quilts talk to me. And this talked to you. It told you it needed some beads. It did. It did. So I also noticed that what you do is you have a backing so you don't see the quilting. I might. Because <laughs> <laughs> I might. I, I, I know I, I like that procedure, but I also, um, do you ever show your quilting on the back or? I do, um, especially say on the petal one, what I do is I put a second back on it and then I'll outline the flowers, the larger flowers themselves. So you're adhering the sandwich together, but you don't get all those little tiny colors on the back. Yes, yes. I well, like a nice clean finish back. Well, that's, that's what you have and this is so, my sample would not look this good. I'm just saying, I, it would be more, of a sample. We only have a few minutes left and I want to make sure we talk about this. This to me, when we, uh, we originally were going to have this in the show, but we have to have this in the show. Can you tell me why I have to have this in the show? Well, I think it speaks to what this show is all about, adding color to your quilts. That right here, the yellow and the gray and the white was what I started with. Mm -hmm. This was the piece of fabric that I bought and I did it on purpose because I wanted to add color and make it totally different. And I did. This is the same piece of fabric, but I've added color to it. Unbelievable. I'm, so I'm going to show this again. Here's the fabric she bought. And then you added color with the Shiva or? The Shiva paint sticks. And then in the background, because the Shiva paint sticks act as a resist when you're finished with it, I was able to use Derwent ink tents blocks with water and paint the blue in the background. Oh, now I'm just gonna ask, I'm gonna ask you to open those up, please. Sure, sure. So these are Derwent. That's not a brand new box. <laughs> Well, that's even better. So there I don't know. If, so and you do and you how do you add water to those? Uh, no. We, when you're all finished, um, oh, actually, yes. On this one, I did. What I did was I graded. I have a little grater, and I graded some of the color into a little container, and I mixed what they call uh, fabric medium with it, and it brings out the color when you paint with it, like a nutmeg grater. 
it was like a nutmeg grater. It's very small, it's a little container, and you can grate on the top of it so that it makes little tiny pieces, and you can almost make like a paint with it. Well, I think this is amazing, because I, I just, this, this really just blows my mind. Fabric you purchased, mm -hmm. fabric very you Very inexpensively. Up. Yes, I mean, you can, yes. And then fabric that you end up with, really. And then I can see your touches, I love your little tiny circles. That's an art to make the them, pebbling. that little pebbling. Yeah. That's, that's a true art. Would you sit in front of the sewing machine forever and do that? Now, I'll tell you, once you get in the zone, it moves along. Okay, she's making it sound a lot easier than it really is because I, to, for me to get into that zone, there's a lot of choice words going on uh, with between me and my sewing machine. But I like this piece because it shows you what's possible with color. It does show you what's possible. What's next? We we're, we only have a few minutes left, Kathy. What is next for you with your quilting? Do you have some aspirations or some special designs? I do. I have actually recently taken up painting. I love really? watercolor painting, but I'm taking classes in acrylic painting because they're available to me. I'm learning a lot. What I hope to do is to paint my own pictures. I love nature's shots and landscape and then turn that into a fabric painting and well, free motion quilt it. I know you can. And before the program started, your husband showed me your first painting that you did on a cell phone. And I was expecting, to me, that looked very accomplished. I was expecting something to look very beginner-like. And if I go painting with you, I'm not going to let you look at my page picture. I'm just not, you're not allowed because you are highly talented. And he's very proud of you to show you that, to show me that picture. Thank but you. you are going you're going to have a, a second career in this. I would love it. <laughs> yes, really, you really are. It's really fabulous. Now if people want to get in contact with you, what would they do? How would they contact you? Um, they can contact me online at quiltingsbykathy.com. Um, I also have a Facebook page, Quiltings by Kathy, um, that they can contact me through. They can private message me. Um, or, you know, just chat with me even. On yes. We, you're a member of SACWA, which I'm going to be doing a show on, and you're going to be giving a workshop through SACWA. And I, I suggest to people to join. But if they, if they want to work with you individually or you give classes, you have a wonderful uh, note card production. We did already a talk on the that. postcards. Postcards, thank mm -hmm. you. The fabric postcards. Yeah, fa I'll get it out. Fabric postcards. Um, but highly talented, and I can't wait to see the next step that you're coming, that, that you're working on. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for being on the show. If you would like to contact Kathy, her, again, her, her contact information is? Quiltingsbykathy.com. And if you forget that and you want to contact me, uh, my uh, contact information is always BCTV. You can call the studio or you can contact me at jmdteach at comcast.net. Kathy, thank you so much. Thank Amazing. you for having me, Jan. This is wonderful. Absolutely wonderful.